and me. There's no one that is free from this. This is our biggest problem, is that we're guilty of inaction. We're guilty of doing nothing. It's not that we are greatly disobeying Allah. And I'm going to tell you, there were a people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to as Sami'na wa Ata'na. Correct? And these were the Sahaba of Ar Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were a people who listened, they heard, and then they did what? They obeyed. They acted and they listened. Whatever Allah said, they did it. Whatever Ar Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded, they enacted it immediately. They didn't need to get a fiqh council in, in, in 30 shaykh to give them 50 fatwas and try to get their way around it and out of it like we do. They just did it. That is one end of the scale. That's the, pure, that's the purest end of the scale. On the completely other end of the scale, we have a people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to as what? Sami'na wa asa'na. They listened to Allah and then they just blatantly disobeyed Him. And we know this is Bani Israel in, in, in its purest aspect. They listen to Allah and they would just do something else. Allah would tell them to do something, they would do a completely different thing. Or Allah would tell them to do something and then they would question Him so much to get out of it. And they would do it barely with a, with a small heart. Or Allah would tell them to do something and they would just say whatever. And this was the other end of the scale. So you have two ends now. People who were at the purest end of good and the people who were on the purest end of evil. Now the, un the fortunate thing for this ummah and the unfortunate thing for this ummah is that we aren't on either side. We're not on either side. We don't listen and obey. And most of us, and I group us as a whole, we don't listen and blatantly disobey Allah. We are, I like to term the coin, the term, Sami'na, we listen, wa khalas. We hear Allah, and that's it. Allah tells us to do something, and we do nothing. Allah commands, and we say, MashaAllah. Our Rasul Wasallam commands us, and we say, SubhanAllah. This is who this we and I'm putting us all together. We just have to admit our faults. That this is our problem. That and you will find for me nowhere, nowhere in the Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in the Sunnah of Allah's Messenger, you will never find for me where Allah has said that He will reward you for inaction. Nowhere. Is there anyone that can find me that? Where Allah will reward you for doing nothing. Especially when it's in the face of blatant commands to act. You will never find it. This is why Allah's favor is off of this ummah. Because He is commanding us over and over again in the Qur'an for many things that we just don't do them. We just pass them over. We just don't listen to them. We just don't hear them anymore. And this is what has happened to us. And this is why Allah is telling us, Do you want me to avoid you a painful punishment? تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Believe in Allah and His Messenger. وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ And then you make some effort for me. You work for me. You strive for me. You struggle for me. And you do effort for me and sacrifice for me. And I will prevent you a painful punishment. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for this ummah. Because even Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, the Imam al tabiin he said, talking about Iman, because people say, oh yeah, we have the first two. I believe, I believe, I believe. Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said that Iman, faith, is not the substance of your hopes and wishes. Iman is not what you just hope for and what you wish for. Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said that real Iman is that which settles itself in your heart. And then it becomes manifested through your actions. This is true Iman. True Iman causes you to act. True belief does not allow you to sit still. True Iman in Allah would not allow you to sit still when you see people blatantly disobeying Allah rampantly in the world. True belief in Allah would not allow you to sit still while people are mocking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all over the world rampantly like it's a good thing to do. Your, your real iman would not let you do that. Real iman would not let you sit still while people call our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam some of the things that we hear, him, hear them call him. Real iman will not let you do this because it settles in your heart and then it starts churning like an engine. And when it starts churning, you have to act. You have to do something. You have to work for Allah. And you have to do it with wisdom. But you have to do something. And you have to work. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us for. And a lot of people ask me, because people can take me wrong and say, you should just go out and just start doing crazy things. No, no, no. 
don't, don't, don't say that Yusha did that. I would like to go back home to the States and I would like to be able to come back here to Australia. So let's not get that idea. So people ask me, okay, what should we do? If I had all the answers, I would be distributing them like pills. But one answer I do have is that we must do something and we must do it sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with hikmah, with wisdom, with sincerity and in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And I'm going to give you a tip at the end of what I think we can begin with. But one thing I do know is that something done sincerely, purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with wisdom done in accordance to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam done with the advice of the knowledgeable ulama that we have is always better than doing nothing. And even if that effort that you begin to do is maybe misguided in the beginning, number one, it will be rewarded because of the intention. And number two, it may even that Allah will reward you by sending someone to you to correct you. But either way, you will be doing something beneficial. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it some reward insha'Allah when it's done with the wisdom that we need. And Allah says for doing these three things, He would avoid us a painful punishment. And if that's all that Allah wanted to give us for working for Him, then that would be enough. That's enough. We wouldn't need to ask Allah anything else. If Allah just says, I won't punish you, khalas, ya Allah, I don't need anything else. I don't need anything else. But Allah is al-ghani. He is the one who is rich without need and his giving to the creation does not decrease him one single bit. He says, that's not enough for me. That's not enough for me. If you do this for me, not only will I avoid your painful punishment, but what does Allah say He'll give you next? يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ I will forgive you all of your sins. All of them. يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ وَيُرْخِلْكُمْ جَنَّةِ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَرِ وَمَا سَقِينَ طَيِّبَاتٍ فِي جَنَّةِ أَعْلٍ ذَلِكُ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمِ Allah says, not only will I forgive you all of your sins, but I'll give you Jannah for free. I'll give you Jannah as a free gift. Why is Jannah a free gift? Because you can't earn it. I don't care what you do, you can't earn Jannah. It's impossible for you to earn Jannah. Because, number one, the authentic statement of our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa is narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu an. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, Do not let any of you think that by your good deeds you will earn paradise. And they asked him, not even you, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He said, not even me, unless, what? Allah forgives me. So what do we earn by working for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and striving for Him and struggling for Him and sacrificing for Him? We earn, يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ we earn that Allah forgives us. We earn from Allah His mercy. We earn from Allah that He decides not to punish us even though He has the right to do so. Because one sin, one disobedience before Allah goes against the nature of our creation and Allah has all right, all due to punish us and no one could call Him unjust. But Allah says, يَغْفِرْ لُكُمْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ I'll forgive all of your sins and give you Jannah for free. Forever, without end. Not only will I give you Jannah as a gift from me, I'll give you beautiful homes like you've never seen. Homes like Allah mentions in the Quran, things that an eye has never seen, things that an ear has never heard, nor could a mind ever imagine. I'll give you that type of home in Jannah. And not only will I give you that type of home in Jannah, I'll give it to you fi Jannati Adn, in one of the most beautiful and blessed parts of Jannah. And then Allah says, Dalikul. Fawzul Adim. This is indeed a great achievement. Allah is saying that do you want to have an achievement in life? All of us want to be successful, right? How many of you do not want to be successful? Everybody in life wants to be successful. Everybody wants to be somebody. I think uh, Michael Jackson made a song like that. Everybody wants to be somebody. You really want to be somebody? Allah says, this is somebody.